And we continue to bring you coverage uh, of the passing of the late Archbishop Emeritus uh, Desmond Tutu. Our coverage continues, uh, and I think we will start with uh, some headlines, uh, and then we'll, in fact, we won't have headlines uh, because it is the nature of the story that we are covering today. Many, many, in fact, all South Africans, are, I dare say, reflecting on the legacy uh, of the late Archbishop Emeritus Desmond Tutu, whose tour de force of a journey through life has come to an end uh, at the age age of 90. He described himself as someone who was responding and serving what he called a divine mandate, right? Divine mandate. So that meant that uh, basically he was going to be heard, whatever the consequences, uh, whatever the situation was. And so over the decades, uh, such has been the situation with uh, Archbishop Emeritus Desmond Tutu, who has now passed on. Over the next few hours, you'll be hearing a number of voices here on ENCA reflecting on how they interacted with the late Archbishop Desmond Tutu. So let's start doing that then and start with the leader of the official opposition, John Stienhuisen, who joins me now uh, to um, reflect on the Archer's legacy. Uh, Mr. Stienhuisen, uh, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us here on ENCA. A truly difficult day. Uh, the best, um, one of the best among Amongst us is how Tulima Donzella uh, describes the late, uh, the late Arch, and I, I can't find any fault in that particular statement. Just your reflections on the passing of the late Arch uh, Bishop Desmond Tutu. Thanks, Tula Sizwe, and, uh, and great to be with you and the viewers on a very, very sad day, uh, not only for the nation, but I think the world, because as you rightly acknowledged he was a Nobel laureate and uh, certainly an international citizen and spoke out not only about issues in South Africa but about international issues as well. Um, I think he portrayed the best of us as, as a nation and he continuously urged us to strive to being better than we, than we all were. Um, and I think that one of the lasting legacies that, that he will leave and, and which we can assist with is providing um, that we continue to strive for the ideals and uh, values that he held so dear and to be the, that better country that, that he wanted to see. Uh, certainly a man with a, a very sharp tongue, but incredibly forgiving and open heart and uh, not afraid to speak out with great courage uh, under very difficult circumstances in the pre-democratic stage in South Africa. Uh, he was uh, targeted and vilified by the apartheid government for speaking that truth to power. Um, but it's not something that stopped when democracy dawned. He continued to be the moral conscience of our nation uh, for the decades after freedom in South Africa uh, and was very, very swift to point out uh, things that he felt were unjust and he was unhappy with and to give a voice to the voiceless, the poor and downtrodden, credible work amongst, by him and his foundation amongst destigmatizing HIV and AIDS uh, and trying to bring South Africans together uh, to achieve a, a common objective. And certainly I think our country is poorer today uh, for his passing. Uh, and we take time to take stock of the incredible life of this individual, one of the real giants uh, of our country, and, and he's going to be sorely missed. Yeah, and as far as speaking truth to power and calling the thing a thing and calling out injustice and, um, you know, what he considered to be evil, um, and in fact what was considered by many to be evil under apartheid, but even beyond uh, where he saw that things were going wrong, that courage to speak out, how do you believe South Africans should emulate that? Because I think that, you know, an example has been set uh, quite emphatically by the late uh, Archbishop. It's now a question of how do we emulate it and how do we uh, continue along that path of being able to speak truth to power and calling it out uh, when it needs to be called out, whatever the, the consequences. Absolutely, and I think it, it is that courage to be able to speak out against wrongdoing and uh, for those in power to be a voice for the voiceless and downtrodden as well. I mean, the Archbishop uh, never associated himself with kings and rulers. He was always amongst the people, um, speaking up against injustice, whether it was poverty, whether it was HIV and AIDS, whether it was uh, uh, abuses against the LGBTQI community. Uh, he, was, he was that voice there reminding us that we can do better, we can be better, and that we, and we want the country to succeed. We have to be better. And I think it's that urging um, that has pricked the conscience of many a political leader, many a president, and and many a and many a government, and uh, I think that the lesson there is that 
we should always have the courage to speak truth to power but it's when good men are quiet in the face of evil or or corruption or maladministration that uh, that it's generally the poor that will end up suffering as a result of that so i think the biggest legacy we can have is a living legacy and that is to recommit ourselves to the ideals uh, and values and principles that archbishop tutu carried with him from the fight against apartheid all the way through into post democratic south africa where he was a, a very very vehement critic of corruption maladministration uh, and and government uh, that failed to deliver to uh, the poorest of the poor and i think that that uh, will be his biggest legacy going forward for all of us and of course during the time of our transition the early stages uh, of the transition uh, especially in the uh, national government unity he steered the ship uh, of reconciliation through heading up the trc now the conversation around reconciliation and whether we have achieved uh, or attained full reconciliation one with our past but also a reconciliation that is coupled with justice continues to be a conversation in uh, south africa today and you are one of the people at the forefront of political leadership and i suppose one of the agents uh, to sort of help us uh, pedal forward in as far as that direction of reconciliation uh, that is not vacuous that is not uh, meaningless a, a, a reconciliation that is coupled with justice and equality quality how do we then honor the the late arch uh, in that regard in ensuring that we continue this project of reconciliation uh, way beyond because you know he he was certainly one of the last of a generation that mandela uh, generation yeah look i mean i think that uh, that we we still exist in a country where we've not achieved full reconciliation and there are many many people in south africa that are still not felt the fruits of freedom or tasted those fruits of freedom uh we've got 30 million south africans who live in abject poverty uh we've got almost an entire adult population uh, half our adult population unemployed um we've still got great injustice that exists in this country and i think that we've got to strive uh, to addressing that and to do it in a way that ensures that we have meaningful reform that's going to be able to lift those people out of poverty and into opportunity uh, and that starts with clean and accountable government that focuses on the people and not on the politicians uh, a government that focuses on service delivery and being an agent of change uh, in the areas where it has been entrusted to lead uh, and then leading with uh, leading with uh, in a way that promotes dignity and respect for all South Africans and i think if we can carry those values that the archbishop Uh, carried with him through those years uh, into government and beyond i think south africa will be a far better place uh, mm. than it is currently and i think we'll see far more deep uh, entrenched uh, reconciliation and obviously a uh, greater opportunity for more and more south africans Uh, Mr. Stiernes, and I'm out of time, but I would be unfair to you if I don't give you the opportunity to reflect on the late Archer's humanity, because uh, one way or another, if you did interact with him, there's no way you were going to miss uh, his humanity, his um, legendary humor. Just share with me any of the interactions that you may have had with him. Yeah, well, absolutely. I mean, I had a number of interactions with them at, at events, never one-on-ones, but certainly uh, conv- you know, brief conversations, and certainly a very warm, generous man. And as, as I said, as sharp as his tongue could be, is as wide open and generous as his heart was, uh, and always very quick to forgive as well and to promote forgiveness. Uh, and it is that humanity. I mean, that that disarming laugh that you could hear uh, if you were at an event with him. You'd hear that that laugh from across the room. Uh, and you'd know that that somebody was uh, was on the receiving end of a of a joke or some good humor from uh, from him and i think he was able to disarm many of his critics using humor and humanity yeah. uh, and i think it was a, a very very powerful tool that he used to be able to disarm even the most uh, uh, dangerous opponents